a listening album, and it's probably the first listening kind of album we've done. Mm. You know, that's not going to jump out and scare the ass off you. You know what I mean? Like what some Oasis albums have done. You know what I mean? I think you know the more you hear it, the more you're going to get into it. Once you've written the greatest rock and roll album of the nineties, what do you do? This time around, I think. Right then. You know, we've got to fucking re-establish ourselves as, you know, we're, what we should have done in the first place, you know what I mean? We're a great fucking band. I think people are realising that in this album. I'm not really concerned about being the biggest or the best anymore. I've done all that, you know. I've been a phenomenon once. Don't want to be one again, you know. I want to do our bit, and I think that's nice and refreshing, you know what I mean? We don't walk on a big smile and that little dance routine is going on. I want, I want the band to carry on. This is my band and I want it to work. I love rock and roll. Noel and Liam together are Oasis, actually. But it's up to them. They could last forever. They just got to keep doing it. They were saying quite a long time ago, we're going to do three albums that are going to be, you know, lay down the Oasis kind of, I don't know, the gospel according to Oasis, and then move on from it. You know what I mean? We've done four. One might have not been, one might, one might not have been, you know, well, a claim like Morning Glories, but who gives a You know what I mean? Not every album's gonna... You know, people are not gonna like every album you do, mm. you know? And that's the end of it, so... You know, I've got no problem with... No, I don't think anything's gone wrong. It's all completely turned around now. We just want to get on with the music. Forget all that crap. It's all been done before. Let some other band do it now. You get bored with it. All that drinking and taking drugs just gets in the way, so... You know, the day I started the band, or we started the band, we went in there to write songs for us. And we hope people like them. And if they do get what you're going, that's very nice. Everyone has a nice time and that. But, you know, people go, oh, you, you know, you're a big band, you, you've got to write for your fans. They don't. It's, it's, things don't change, you know what I mean? So we write for ourselves, and that's what we want to do, and it come out, and, and you know, you people know, like people it, like people don't like it. Just to, just to lay this Bono Gigsy thing to rest on, they were very important to the band before, just to the persona and everything. And it has been said that it's not so much as five Mancunians on the piss now, it's, it's like a normal band now. It's like, yeah. it's like a proper entity now. Is, would that be fair comment? They are better well, musicians. Well, oh, oh yeah, so. totally. I mean, in the case of... What it's done is, it's, it's Gemma's taken a lot of the weight off my shoulders because I don't have to play lead guitar all the time, so I can concentrate on singing and playing rhythm guitar a lot more than I would usually do. And Gwig's by his own admission, bless him, could never play the bass anyway. Yeah. Um, so, and he's a far better bass player, but, you know, it was like, they were right for the band at that time. But I don't think they were, I don't think that, I don't think it would be right if they were playing the, I don't know, it just, this just feels right, you know. And I think that if Bonin and Gwigs were still in the band, we wouldn't have been making another record after this because it's just become a bit stale for me. Do you know, I've not spoke to Bonehead and Gwig since the day that they oh, left, which is... weird, that's yeah, so strange. Yeah, it is strange. Yeah. But I don't... I, sp I phoned Gwigs up in the, in the weeks after he'd... He left by fax, by the way. Yeah. Now, how 80s is that? What's fax? Yeah, left by fax. That's... I mean, that's old school, man. Yeah, seriously. And I, was, I used to call his message. Did you have a fax, or was the management company have a fax? Somebody, so, somebody just showed me the facts, right. you know, I, and uh, I remember Random phoning facts. his missus, and, and I knew there was someone that went on the, the third time I'd called, and she said, he's at the shops, and I was like, look, Ruth, I know that boy, mm. he's too f mashed up in his own brain, he's too f out of his head on f on a, mm. to even contemplate going to the shops, certainly he's not been there three days on the spin, mm. what's he Mm, mm, mm. Now he's at the shops, he called me, he gets back, and I was like, you know what, I'll take that as a goodbye then. And, that's and, that, and that was that. And Bonehead, we were supposed to meet up for doing the DVD, definitely maybe, and uh, he bottled out at the last minute, because he thought, he'd sent word, he said, I'm not getting involved in any of that reunion <laughs> He thought we were all going to have a group Oh, oh bliss. And he's like, get to f Oh, bliss. Uh, I don't know, but, you know, Strange, I, 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 I hold no grudges against any of those cats, you know what I mean? Oh man, they're shared in a big part of your history, you know? Oh, they were all, the people, people think, I wouldn't only be in, know, I wouldn't be in the band, know. I wouldn't be in the band if it wasn't for them. Was something specifically, you know, that, that happened, or was it uh, something that you've been feeling for a while? That... Well, I don't know, you'd have to speak to the two guys that left, I'm not, 
I'm not convinced that the statement that they put out, which was like they wanted to spend more time with their families, I'm not convinced that that's the real reason why they left the band. I haven't spoken to them since they left. I'm sure that there's deeper reasons than they're willing to admit, but when they tell me, I'll, I'll tell everybody else, but as it stands today, I haven't got a clue why they left, really. I'm not sure whether they planned it or not, because they all sort of came to France, done their, done, done their bits on the album, which would ensure that they got paid for anything that we make, any profit that we make on the album, and then they, then they decided to leave, so now we've got to go around the world and promote it for a year, and they just sit back and take the money, which I'm a bit pissed off about, but, you know. The fact that I'd just put out a statement saying that I'd left the band after all the years that I'd been in them, and that was the end of me with Oasis. To, to be truthful, I think the fun had gone. And the fun had gone for me. And I could see at that stage when I left. Um, you know, we, I've said it before in interviews, we, we, we rented a, a mansion in, in the south of France. It used to belong to Christian Dior. And it was a huge, gorgeous old rambling place with tennis courts, swimming pools, chapel in the ground. We brought our own studio out, rigged it up in the garage, made our own studio. It should have been perfect. You know, we should have had six weeks of joy, you know, it should have been the, the, the most pleasant album to record ever. And it wasn't, you know, everyone had their own maybe personal problems or, you know, we'd, 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 we'd sort of scale great heights in a rapid amount of time. We didn't have a break and I think that showed in the recording, I could feel it. And that's what really did it for me. I just thought, this isn't fun, no one's smiling, no one's having a laugh. And it, you can't forget why why you got into this and why you joined the band and why you picked up a guitar in the first place is to, to experience that fun and that enjoyment and that love of what you do and it wasn't there. So I just thought, well, I could carry on and not speak to anyone and not tell anyone. Finish the album and go and tour it. No one had been on the wires and I'm still bone over Oasis, but I'd be lying to me, but I think more importantly, I'd have been lying to those guys. And you can't do that, you can't be in that band and lie to the other members. You can't go along with it and pretend you're enjoying what you do. You can't pretend you've got to love it more than, if there's such a thing as more than 100%, you've got to love that band more than 100% to succeed in it. That's how we got where we got, you know, and I, I wouldn't have been giving it all, so I made the uh, decision, which wasn't easy, as you can imagine, to leave. So I did, spoke it through and put a statement out. You can't, it's not, you can't just pick and choose when you want to be in a band, you know what I mean? It's like. It wouldn't be fair on, on Gem and Andy now if, if Bone had phoned up tomorrow morning and said, oh, I've changed my mind. It'd be like, well, I can't do that, man, because some other, some other geezer now is, is, is in the group, and that's it. Johnny Marr rang me six months, or six weeks later. He, he phoned me at home and he's like, Bone, it's Johnny. He says, I know there's a lot of rumours going about, I'm not joining Oasis, don't panic. And I was like, oh, thanks for bringing Johnny on. Glad you're not. Cuts for that. You know, it put me in a different light, wouldn't it? We didn't think two members of the band would leave. We just thought we were in it together forever. We went on tour for the first time. That's when it hit me. It was like, all right, okay, they're out on tour. That could have been me. And I knew where they were going, where they were playing, what they were going to experience. And yeah, I had a few moments like, oh shit, there's no going back from this. You've done it, you know. And I don't, I don't think I got to the point where I thought. Bad me, I really want to go back, but yeah, a few regrets, a few regrets, you know. Still do, I mean, I'd, I'd love to have been there till the end, I wish I was, but I was there through the good times, and you know, look back at every minute of it with uh, total joy, you know, it's like, best memories ever. Hey, Noel used to play lead a lot. Bono just play rhythm. Like Noel's not playing as much lead now, you know what I mean? But Gem's doing a bit of lead and they're both doing it so you can, you know, like champagne soup and over there's bits that Gem will play lead on and, you know, you know what I mean, they'll swap about, you know, and it works a lot better. You know what I mean? Noel called me and said, look, 
this is the situation. I went, yeah, I've seen the news. I know what's going on. And um, he said, we're mixing an album. Come down and hang out. When the album was finished, then it was time to find a bass player. And that's when we heard Andy B was around. Liam wanted to hold auditions, you know, and I was like, I'm not going through all that. I'm auditioning like 50 or 60 bass players. And um, we, we knew Gem from from way back when he was on Creation Records. And um, we knew Andy as well, so we knew that we'd get on pretty much all right with him. Things like this throughout your life are gifts, and you've got you've to say thanks. That's what I believe. How many special people change? How many lives are living strange? Where we you? Are we? We're getting high. Slowly walking down the hall, faster than a cannonball. Where we you? Are we? We're getting high. So
click with what you got Taste every potion Cause if you like yourself a lot Go let it out Go let it in And go let it out Life is precocious In the most peculiar way Sister Psycho It's the first time we ever got close to sounding like a modern day Beatles, I think, which is what we were striving for for years and years and years. I'm going driving out of town And you're coming with me The right time is always now So go let it out Go let it in Go let it out So go let it out So go let it in Go let it out I was pretty uninspired at the time about writing the music of Go Let It Out, it stands head and shoulders above anything else. You ain't exactly sure if you've been away a while. Do you keep the receipts for the friends that you buy? Sailing on the sea, I swear.
standing on the shoulder of giants. I'll tell you what, that's not bad, that. I think the bulk of it is some of the best stuff I've ever done. I mean, a lot, a lot of the, I know a lot of the fans would probably disagree with that. But, uh, for me personally, it was an enjoyable experience making it. And, um, you know, I think the songs, some of the songs come across a lot better live because they're so, uh, which, which, is, which is funny really, because some of them are like, sort of quite intricate, but they, they sort of come across better live. But I, you know, I, I had a, a great time doing it. I had a good time writing it, which is an important thing for me. And um, you know, I, th I think it's been pretty well received, really, to be honest with you. Oasis returned with their first new album in over two years, standing on the shoulder of giants, featuring the first single, Don't Let It Out. Oasis, standing on the shoulder of giants, in stores now. Hello, this is Noel Gallagher from Oasis and um, I'm inviting you to come and see my band play all over Japan in the next um, two or three weeks. So, um, you know, if you come in I'll see you there and if you don't then you can probably... <laughs> By that I mean, as long as the records that we make are still exciting to me personally and to the rest of the, the rest of the band what's left, then that's all that matters. It, you know, I just it just turns me on, you know what I mean? Like, it gives me a reason to get out of bed, you know what I mean? I don't know what it is, it's just it's something in his music that's spot on. I don't think a lot of people have took, you know, got. You know I mean? Not even the Beatles are it, you know what I mean? I'm looking forward to just 
bringing the band back again, you know what I mean? And the band, not as in that record, the band that we've got now, you know what I mean? The two new players, you know what I mean? People will be shocked when they see us because we're fucking mega. You know, and like, not just that record was done by five of us, two of them have left. So I'm looking forward to just getting this out of the way and, you know, and, you know, get, you know playing this album because I'm proud of it and just, and then getting on to the next one. <laughs> They're a great uh, rock and roll band. They've sold over 25 million albums. This is their newest CD. It's called Standing on the Shoulder of Giants. Yeah! Here they are, Oasis.
single's gonna be uh, Who Feels Love and it's track number three on the album. It's the one that sounds quite uh, Indian. on the desert in uh, Death Valley in just outside Las Vegas about uh, three months ago, two months ago. Um, yeah, well, it sounds good. Isn't it? video <laughs> well it's just uh, the band walking around the desert really which when you say it like that doesn't really sound that exciting but um, you'd have to see it really it's just beautiful scenery it's not that astounding really I love what you do sitting on the stage that's so classic well I've been doing a fucking video man the video was me walking across the fucking desert and I'm absolutely fucking shy <laughs> and I thought time to fucking lie down man Very these classic. boots aren't made for walking anymore You know, the fact that No wasn't there, and that came as a surprise to all the public, of course. And can you go back and tell us a bit, you know, what happened, your point of view, of course? Well, we've done a gig, we cancelled the gig in Barcelona because our mate his wrist. And then we just started drinking all day, and I was just getting asked in interviews about fucking solo albums. And, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to hear about solo music or people in a band doing fucking solo stuff. It's no good to the band, it's no good for the band if someone's thinking about doing solo stuff, so we had a little argument about it and a little bit of a fight, and that was that. A lot of the songs that you play, for example, like a song like Supersonic and uh, the, the loads of others, Go Let It Out, seem to have a um, sort of positive life affirming feel to it. Yeah. Is that something that you always strive for well, in a way, the songs? Well, it's, it's how you write it, you know what I mean? I, I'm not into writing fucking morbid music like the rest of these pricks that are playing here. They all write bollocks, you know what I mean? They're all like fucking, they're all in pain. Well, my fucking ears are in pain, fucking hearing your fucking voice, you twat. You know what I mean? You're right, you know, uh, music should be a fucking uplifting thing. Yeah? Yeah, I think so, yeah. You shouldn't be complaining and whining. No, you shouldn't be, no. I don't think so, no. And even if it's about, even if it's a sad subject, it should be a positive vibe to it. Mm-hmm. All this shite here. Well, I've not even heard of him, but... <laughs> but a band, a band like that's playing here, Pearl Jam or Life... Rubbish. You, you, you all hate them, don't you? I don't hate them, I just think they're rubbish. Yeah. I'm gonna be the one to 
Um, what are the songs that you that you most like playing when you play live? Of ours? Yes, of yours. Hey, I like them all. I like yeah? All. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of every fucking song we've done. Mm. And you know, and the beauty of playing is that you can play a song that you've wrote ten years ago mm -hmm. and you can do it better on that night. Yeah. You know, and, you, and it still sounds fresh. You go, fucking hell, well, we wrote that ten years ago and it, fucking, I got a right kick out of it tonight. Yeah. That's what it's all about. Yeah. And hopefully I'll still be getting the same kick when I'm fucking 50, man. You, you plan to do it till you're 50? I, I, fuck it, I'll, yeah. do it, I'll do it until it bores me, until it doesn't wake me up. some shit concert and thought I could do better than that. Really? Yeah. Well, well, you don't know many names. You did absolutely. Congratulations because you got a great ride yeah, and man. the band is rocking. Yeah, it's, you know, it's different but it's good, still good because we're doing it 10 years and I know what to do. I know. Alan knows his job, everyone else knows their job. It's a piece of cake. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. A lot of festivals. Yeah, man. So you know, like, it's been nice, you know, just getting out of the house. Yeah. Not done a festival for two years, you know. Yeah. yeah. So Do you good. have any festivals left to go? Got, no, that's it, I think. Oh, we've got some in England, yeah. Reading and stuff, and we've got our own shows. <laughs>
proud of every song I've ever sang on, and I don't think I've ever sang it as good as I could. You know, and that's what I like about gigging. You know, you can do supersonic one night, and you can, I've sung that the best I've ever sung it, and it's like eight years old or seven or whatever, seven years old. That's it. I just love to try to sing the songs as good as I can each night. The last big thing for Oasis left to do, you know, we played Madison Square Garden, we played Radio City Music Hall, you know, we played um, Nebworth and Main Road. So after this, there isn't there isn't a lot more that we can achieve, really, I don't think. these eight gigs, you know, which are going to, I mean, I'm really looking forward to them and I'm really going to enjoy these. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'll play anywhere, me, you know. It doesn't matter, you know, it's just, we wanted to do a big gig just to see where we were still after that break we had. And it's just good, and the fans are with it, you know what I mean? And, yeah, it's good. We haven't played outdoors since Nebworth. We haven't done anything this big since Nebworth, really. You know. And like I said before, we were a bit too it was a bit too mad for us to appreciate that. Really. We were just sort of looking down on the crowd and nothing, you know. We were just worried about how many cans of Stella there was in the fridge when we got into the dressing room. Not that it was the biggest gathering of people that England had ever seen for two, you know, for two days on the trot. We were just, as soon as we got out of the helicopter, we were saying to the tour manager, are all the Stellas in there? Are they cold? Has the match started yet? Because I think United were playing Newcastle in the charity shield. When we were going, did you get Sky? You got Sky. Did you get Sky Sports 3 though? And you've got the Guinness? And the Stella, good. And that was it. That, that was all we were interested in, which is great in a way, you know, because we were just oblivious to it all. Good musicians, that's what we need. And uh, good guys, and they just don't put the guitars down, you know what I mean? That's what that's what the band needs, you know what I mean? Gem's taken a lot of the, the workload off me, uh, if you like. I mean, I was never, I was never that comfortable with playing the, the lead guitarist role anyway, you know. I'm more of a rhythm guitarist man myself. But because Bonehead was bald, you know, and I sort of had a semi-decent air cut. You know, it was down to me to be the Jimmy Page of the group, which I didn't mind at the time. But uh, as as it got, as we got bigger, it was like, uh, I'm going to get found out here one day. And I'm not very good at playing the lead guitar, but I'm brilliant at playing with him. One great band comes along once every you know, six or seven years. 
So we've got about four years to go. <laughs> In the past, we'd, we'd always just gone in and set the equipment up and gone and done it, you know. Not worried about the sound too much. Um, we just used to get an overall sound of the, of the group playing in a room and that would be it, you know. That's why the, the, the first three albums in total took half the time of, of this one. I wasn't expecting for it to get mixed reviews at all, I was expecting it to get absolutely hammered, to be honest, because rock and roll isn't fashionable anymore, Oasis aren't fashionable anymore. Um, I don't know how we perceived anymore, but it's, the, you know, I, I can understand some of the criticism and I can understand some of the praise it's got, but I think a lot of it has been paid. about five songs from the new record um, and the rest of it's all great stiffs really I think. If it stays dry and we play all right then it'll be great because everybody knows the songs um, you know and a lot of them are classics of of the modern day I think. Fucking tripping. This is for Bob Geldof. This is for fucking simple minds. This is for all these other fucking idiots who stop. But I'm glad you made it. Yeah. Fucking live, eh? I bet you wish it was fucking free and all. By the way, could I just say peace and love to every single person in the whole stadium? Thank you very much. Wembley shows. I was at one of those Wembley shows. In fact, I was at the Wembley show. The one where yeah, yeah, yeah we lost the plot completely. The, Came out, sat on, yeah. on the monitor, and let the crowd sing the whole song. Fantastic. The, uh, I think what <laughs> yeah, was it good for you. It was <laughs> really. Oh, you look like you wanted to throttle him. Well, the thing is, the night the night before uh, was great, right? The second night is is being beamed out live across Europe to potentially 50 million people. So I get the call, that we all go home after the first night and then I get the call, Liam has been out all night, like, what's new, you know, give a shit. So he comes in and he's old. And just before I go on a stage, somebody, he'd been out with one of the Spice Girls. That's all I was asked about. <laughs> I was like, you're gonna go out, right? The night before you play Wembley State, with Bobby Gillespie. Didn't he meet his wife though? Didn't he meet his wife the night before? Yeah. He did, right. But it's like, go out with Bobby Gillespie. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Go out with Mel F or whatever her name is. <laughs> Sporty Spice. I
and it's like he's all over the shop. Oh, <laughs> mate, that was just hilarious. But from my point of view, I mean, he came on, he suspected sp something about being left with the tea bag and then sat down and pretty much socked the whole show. Yeah, he was... Uh, <laughs> at one point, I, thought, I swear yeah. to God, you walked behind with your guitar and I swear you lifted it at yeah. one point to bring it down. But he was, yeah, he was, uh, wasn't he listing the terms of his divorce settlement? Yeah, the f***ing <laughs> the tea bag. <laughs> no, not the tea bag. It's in the first five minutes as yeah, well. Yeah, and it's just like, you know, I mean, I've heard... The tapes for that show are hilarious. Just yeah, isn't is, is, isn't isn't a song uh, wibblings. <laughs> Noel, having checked out your performance in Reading, crowd were going wild. You looked as though you're enjoying yourself. I had a good night, yeah. Yeah, how was it up there then? It was brilliant. I think um, it was my first festival of the year because the demo I've been doing others out like when I'm not doing the group, so I was uh, well up for it. Yeah. 
feel of it. It was brilliant. Seen. I think it's one of the best gigs that we've ever ever done ever. You know. Tonight's gonna go with a bang after the show. You got any plans? Uh, we'll probably hang around here for a bit, and then um, head back into town. And I don't know. It's the last. It's the last gig of the tour, so um, we we'll probably have a bit of a nice up at the hotel and uh, wait for the sun to come up and get a flight back to London. And uh, well, at some point tomorrow. Well, brilliant. Have a fantastic time. We'll see you up Will on do. stage. All right. All right. Cheers, mate. Thank you. See you later. Some days you get about six hours as a normal person and then it gets a bit mental but so, you know some days it's just chaos and some days it's really quiet and other days it's just really it's sort of in the middle it just depends on where you are and what you're doing i mean i just come back from a for about two weeks ago and um you know i went out clubbing for the first time since 1989 and um sort of got away with it for about six or seven hours until some geordie went oh fucking hell it's no gallagher man and that was it cool country stand still but you know I'm used to it by now, so don't do Take me to the place where you go When nobody knows If it's not a day Please don't put your life in the hands Of a rock and roll band Throw it all away I've got a sign of revolution from my bed Said the brains I had went to my head. Step outside, summertime to me. Stand up beside the fireplace. Take that look from off your face. You ain't ever gonna burn my heart out. You know, it's the second last gig of, of this tour, so it's playing in Scotland. At a festival, I haven't done that since 1994, since we played Team the Park in that tent. Um, it's going to be the last, the last gig for a long, long time, you know, regardless of what happens to the band. Um, regardless of what happens to the band, we, don't, we, all, we, all, we only tour once every two or three years anyway. So. It'll, be the last, it'll be the last gig in Scotland for, you know, two or three years, so... You, don't need, you shouldn't need to psych yourself up, really. I mean, as soon as the, the intro music, you know... Um, just, I'm up for it. This is the last song of this tour. Thanks to everyone that's worked with us. Thanks to you lot for coming. And, uh, well, we'll meet again. We don't know where, we don't know when. But we will meet again. Believe you me, rock and roll star for all of you. If this is the last song that we fucking do on this tour, I want to see these cunts going mad. Put the lights on the fucking crowd. But keep them on. The roll star for everybody in the light. Sometimes in the sunshine, I got a soul in my town. Those days were just too fast for me. 